Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Fly. Ladies and gentlemen, I am by my great being if you so choose. Almighty Father, since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony to its national loyalty. On 2 July 2012, the United States Military Academy Class of 2016 step down to this hallowed to answer that summons. In the intervening 1,418 days, they have striven to arrive at this hour. For their sake, and for that of this nation, we pray that these happy few have confirmed the values of duty, honor, and country while cadets at this institution. We ask that you give these soon to these second lieutenants the will, courage, and tenacity to be the leaders of character that you want them to be. May their model, with honor we lead, be emblematic of who and how these soldiers are. Now, may these proceedings honor you, this nation, and our countries. Watch over those great Americans deployed at this effort. Trusting in your goodness, we pray these things. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 59th Superintendent of the United States Military Academy, Lieutenant General Robert L. Haslam, Jr.
Green Flash of 2016 this morning. Welcome to West Point. What a great day to hear at the World's Premier Women Development Institution. This week started out on the floor side, felt more like January than May, but between the G3 and the chapter, we got ourselves a beautiful day for graduation. So thank you all for being here. So you may recall that at last year's graduation ceremony, our guest speaker serenaded the class of 2015 with a few bars of Sinatra, a graduation karaoke of sorts. And it left such a lasting impression that I was asked to do it this year. And while I was a little flattered, even to be considered, the hard truth is that, while I have many talents singing just as one of them, Drive a harmony across Michael Stadium, I'm in. Order, order a ping pong ball of salt and an ambulance, call me. Kill a deer bare-handed on my back. Vietnam. 
and the minds of those cadets from the half century ago was the understanding that they would be sent overseas to lead America's soldiers and fight in Vietnam. In fact, 579 graduates of the class of 66, 98% of them would see service in Vietnam. And while they understood what awaited them on graduation, they did not know what history would demand of them. The class of 66 would not only fight communist aggression in Vietnam, they would also stand in the gap against the Soviet Union during the Cold War, see action in Panama, Bosnia, and the Middle East. They would go on to lead our army, our armed forces, and even our nation. They would become leaders in technology, business, government, and academia. They had no idea what history had in store for them, but they rose to the challenge. When you came here to West Point in the summer of 2012, our nation was still at war. Each of you knew full well that you would join an army of war and be set in harm's way to lead a complex and uncertain operating environment in numerous places around the world. But to stop, despite the dangers and challenges of an uncertain world, you chose to come here with a deep desire to serve, to stand for something much larger than yourselves. And like those from the past generations, you chose to stand in the gap and protect and defend our nation in a way of life that would threaten. So today we pass the torch of leadership to you, the class of 2016. In a little while, we'll take the oath to support and defend the Constitution and go forth to lead our army with honor and distinction. Gerald Dempsey was always fond of saying, make it matter, which is the last thought I want to leave with you. And as you leave West Point, you assume the sacred responsibility and privilege of leading America's sons and daughters. Make every day matter. Make every duty and assignment matter. Make every opportunity as a leader matter. And most important, make every soldier matter. You have the complete trust and confidence of everybody here at West Point, as well as all of America. You are ready, you are prepared, you will be brave. We could not be more proud of each and every one of you. Now, we'll make it again. It is now my honor to introduce this morning's graduation speaker, a graduate of the University of Delaware and Syracuse Law School. Mr. Biden became one of the youngest people ever elected to the United States Senate at age 29 representing the state of Delaware. During his 36 years in the Senate, he established himself as a leader on some of our nation's most important domestic and international challenges, serving as chairman and ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, where he played a pivotal role in shaping U.S. foreign policy. He has been in the forefront of issues and legislation related to terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, post-Cold War Europe, the Middle East, and Southwest Asia. Now as the 47th Vice President of the United States, Mr. Biden has continued his leadership on important issues facing the nation, drawing on his foreign policy experience and advising the President on a multitude of international issues. He has been a long been advocate and supporter of the armed forces of the United States, traveling to Iraq and Afghanistan numerous times in this past decade. Mr. Vice President, we are truly honored to have you with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm West Point welcome for the Vice President of the United States, the Honorable Joe Biden. Thank you, Joe. Class of 216, man, you're a good looking bunch. I want to 